Psalm 17, a prayer of David. Hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goes not out of framed or framed lips. Fain is invented, imagined, assumed, pretend, lying. Hollywood great for framing. He's saying, Lord, hear the right. God hears the wicked and the, and the righteous. Then unto my cry, he's crying unto the Lord, prayer. To let my sentence, sentences, or the judge puts out, come forth from thy presence. So he's seeking some kind of justice in this prayer. He wants God to, to pronounce. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved my heart. And that's what God does. And the biggest thing, you know, God can't tempt a man, this and all that. No, but God does try us and give us events in our life to show us who we really are. Our faults, our, our pluses. To see where we're at in our Christian walk and to see where we fail. It's all based upon the heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. When it's peaceful, when it's quiet, no one's, no one's about the house, there's no distraction. Thou hast tried me. Now, the thing is, you, you get from David, too. I mean, that night that he walked on the, on, on the whatever, the rooftop of the castle. And some of the things that we see that some, sometimes looks like David had a hard time at night sleeping. But then we go back to, you know, um, I laid me down to sleep and all that. Something about David in night season. There may be a, there may be a time that if, if David did not sleep, or if David did sleep, there may be a time that David got up in the middle of the night and would just speak to the Lord because the entire kingdom was quiet. And that's the best time to speak to the Lord. And there's no distractions. Thou hast tried me. To point who you are, what you are. Some men will boast, you know, look what I am. And God will give them a situation in their life and they'll cry like baby, they'll weak under, they'll break. Why? Well, you weren't as tough as you were. I mean, listen, humble before you stumble. Pride goeth before a fall. Thou shalt find nothing. Well, you can't say that today. But they all have sinned and come to show the glory of God. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. I don't know, because James says the tongue is unruly, no man can tame it. But he said mouth. <laughs> So there is a possible way, according to David, that you can actually keep your mouth shut. It takes a lot of work. But then again, we just read he prays in the middle of the night. His heart is after God. That may be the key right there. Concerning the works of men... By the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the path of the destroyer. The works of men, all everybody else, but by the work of thy lips, the word of God, the word, I have kept me from the path of the destroyer. Regarding it, all men have sinned. And the fruit of them will be the destroyer. Listen, God told Israel, you better put blood on the doorpost. Well, how many didn't? Well, when the destroyer came through, when God came through, when the death angel came through, there were people that were they found firstborn children, boys, dead. Why? They didn't believe God. They didn't do what God said to do. You know, you go downtown as we do, there's works of men. 
But by the word of the lips of the Lord, have we done what God, we're going to heaven one day. We're going to glory. They choose not the way, the truth, and the life. They'll be under the destroyer. It's all what God says. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. Keep me going, Lord, in the way that you want me to go, and let me not backslide. I have called upon thee. Thou will hear me. I guess you can say that that's your prayer line, your phone line. Problem is, a lot of people when they get into trouble, they they pick up the phone, they call anybody but the Lord. Oh God. Incline thy ear unto me and hear my speech. Again, there are times when you're praying, it's such a serious prayer. God, hear me. God, listen. It's not God. David's not saying that God's not listening. It's just David's a human like us. You, you can't. Don't put David on a pedestal. That's the problem we do with Bible, Bible people. We put him on a pedestal and we hear David say, Oh, Lord, look upon me. And they're like, Well, Maybe God doesn't listen. No. David thought just like you and I thought. David had had sins just like you and I have sinned. David had times in his life as great as a warrior he is with God. And his heart was seeking God. He'd be in prayer like, Lord, are you listening? To so don't get upset when in your life you prayed that prayer, Lord, are you listening to me? David did. And the Lord loved David, and the Lord never rebuked David for it. He's not going to rebuke you. Listen, even Jesus had his father turn his back from him in prayer. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Ah, you see? Show thy mar mar uh, marvelous loving kindness. Answer my prayer, Lord, with loving kindness. O thou that saveth by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Oh, now look at look at the jewels in that one little verse there. Let's look at it. Thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee. Now who is that? Who's on the right hand of God? Jesus Christ. What is Jesus? Jehovah saves. There is a salvation. How do you get saved? Imagine that in the Old Testament. Believing by putting your trust on the right hand of God which saveth. Look at that. From, in thee from those that rise up against them. Now, the salvation here is not salvation going to heaven. Salvation here is there's an enemy. Remember in the Old Testament, David had enemies all around him. His entire life had enemies. Well, here we go. Keep me as the apple of the eye. I never knew really what knew that expression is. I've heard an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but but the sayings come out of the Bible. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Now, do you think God has wings? Some churches do. It's not saying, listen, it, it's using something that we can understand. What do you get when you get that picture? You picture a mother bird when there's a storm coming or, or a bunch of chicks. When there's a when they're out in the thing and there's a fox, the mother ch chicken there gathers all her brood underneath her her wings and protects them. It's the mother bird giving her life. Oh boy, look at that one for her chicks, for her baby birds. Lord, you're my father. You're my you're my parent. I need to hide in you. You take care of it. So every child runs home to their to their father when they got trouble. 
And Jesus even said, uh, when he's talking about Israel, as a chicken would call her, her a brow there, but Israel would not. From the wicked that oppress me. Yeah, you, you, you expect that from the wicked. Do you expect it from people who call themselves Christians? And then you turn around and wonder, are they really Christians? Because he says, the wicked oppress me. David was a man of God. What are you saying? You know exactly what I'm saying. From my deadly enemies who compass me around, surround me. There are people out there trying to kill me. You know what? That was Jesus Christ. The wicked always oppressed him. The wicked always were against him. They were trying to catch him at his words. And then when he was on the cross, they were all around him. There were more that were against him than were for him. And it's amazing how when finally, when the, the cross work is finished, one Roman centurion said, Something like, he was the Son of God, past tense. One. They are enclosed in their own fat. Now, taking back to, you know, the feathers and the, and the wings and all that. Does that mean that these guys are out there, they cut themselves open, they go inside? No, it's not what that means. Are they dressed up in bacon? No, it's not what it means. It's prosperity. Listen, a fat pig or a fat turkey has had its full. They've had a prosperity of food. They're fat with possession. With their mouth, they speak proudly. They're going to have a fall. Pride is not God. It never is and never will be. I keep saying that. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. They're surrounding David. Bowing down to the earth would be they're mocking what did they do to Jesus? If thou be the Son of God, hey, he calls for Elijah. Well, let's see if Elijah will come. How? You know, the, the, the Roman soldiers bowed the knee and when he's wearing the, pur the purple Roman robe, robe, excuse me, with the, with the thorns on his house, they bowed the knee to the Bible and said, Hail, King! Mocking him. David, you're the king. ha, 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 ha. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey. And as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Study lions. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. The enemy. Cast him down. We're not told to do that. What does Jesus tell us to do? What does John tell us to do? He says, bless and, and pray for those that persecute us. Help them. Man, if there's one thing you can't see between the two testaments, what the difference is, how David said, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. And the Bible says in the New Testament, pray for him, pray for him, pray for him. You can't see that difference. Now, you take that one big church, and if you go against them, what are they? Kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. Anaphanize them. Well, guess where they are? In the Old Testament. They're not in the New. I learned the other day, well, the lesson that says Jehovah Witnesses are forbidden to pray before the, the heathen. And the guy says, well, let's pray. Well, I can't pray before you. You mean you're not going to sit here and pray for my soul, whatever you believe? You dead dog, you. You can't even pray for me. 
Not buy one of your stupid magazines or something. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Wait a minute. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which are thy hand, O Lord. From men of the world, which have their portion in this life. Oh, so this life does have wicked people. Satan sold in the tares among the wheat, according to the parable of Jesus. And they're going to grow up together until the time of the harvest of the angels. And that which is tares are going to be bundled up and cast into the fire. That which is wheat is going to be gathered up and brought into glory. Whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasures. So Jesus said, it raineth upon the just and the unjust. And they don't even know it and give God the credit. They are full of children. Well, we saw that in Job, the wicked man. What are you going to do when you got a wicked man who raises his children, has a whole bunch of children like, like they do in America today, so we can get more money from the government, and they stand before God, and the Bible says that children are a heritage of the Lord. I'm talking to an unsaved man standing at the great white throne judgment. And God says, okay, each of your 15 children that you had, what'd you do with them? Well, I didn't believe you were. I don't believe well, Here I am. Tell me you don't believe me now. You're standing before me, you idiot. Don't call me an idiot. A fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Well, I didn't believe the Bible. Well, Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, it's gone away, my word shall not. Now, my word says, Mr. Atheist, that has children, that they are a heritage of me, and you are supposed to raise them up, you are supposed to bring them up in the adoration of the Lord, now give an account. By the way, it wasn't the welfare of America that gave you the food on your plate. It was my treasures. Now give an account for that. Let's see how many times you bowed your head and gave me thanks for the meal. In America. Oh, let's see how many Thanksgivings that your country gave you at least once a year. Let's play how many Thanksgivings that you thanked me for the meal. I'm Thanksgiving. Let's see that one at least. Imagine an atheist in America celebrating Thanksgiving when it goes, oh, that's right, it don't go back to the pilgrims more. Let's just change the whole rewrite history. That's okay. See? And they think that the God in heaven is going to say, oh, they changed their history. What am I going to do? They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babe. Inheritance. So a wicked man lives just like a wicked man like any other man. He has children. He leaves his substance to his children. Meanwhile, he's out going after a righteous man. He's trying to destroy him. He's trying to destroy the poor. As we've seen through all 17 chapters of, of Psalms and Genesis all the way to Psalm 17. No, you got to get that. Because it said, David said, I do not frame lips. You know, a wicked will, will go into a church and frame his lips to pretend to be somebody he's not. And he has children just like you have children. He's got food just like you, you've got food. He's got stuff just like he's got. The only thing is, he doesn't have God and doesn't want to have anything to do with God. And he wants to get you. Sometimes they stand in the pulpit, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Sometimes they are the church, 2 Corinthians 11, with another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. As for me, David, 
I will behold thy God face and righteousness. Oh, so the contrast here, David, who is right, is going to see the face of God in righteousness. What does that mean? David, uh-oh, I'm so sorry. I've got to break a rule. We're going to go back to chapter 16 tonight. David says, as for me, I will behold thy righteousness. The wicked man will not. So it says in Psalm 16, 10, for thou will not leave my soul in hell. According to Psalm 17, 15, David's going to see God in righteousness. That does not mean that David's going to hell. And the rest of that verse, neither, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Well, David will see corruption, but David's not the holy one. And the context here is somebody went to hell. It's not David. It's the holy one. Because David said, as for me, I will behold thy righteousness. Hold that I will behold thy face in righteousness. The lost man that he talks about is going to face God at the great white throne judgment. In unrighteousness. Big difference. David's going to probably stand at the great white throne judgment. Maybe. You mean he's going to go to hell? No. He's going to go to the lake of fire? No. If his name shows up in the book, he gets salvation. He gets to go with the Lord. Now, these wicked men, with their names not in the book, they go into the lake of fire. They will see God in unrighteousness. There are going to be people saved at the great white throne judgment. Abimelech, the king of Egypt, that knew that adultery was wrong. It's going to stand before God one day. I believe his name is going to be written in the book. You know, he repented even though he didn't do no wrong. And he rebuked the Lord. And the Lord did not chastise him. He said, Lord, I didn't know. I, that guy told me it was his sister. He goes, I know. I'm going to deal with him. How would you like to give him a tongue lash? Please, Lord, yes, 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 yes. All right. Go give it to him and speak to her. Say, hey, you know, this is for you and the covering of thy face, young lady. How about Naaman? He's got leprosy. He goes to the God of Israel. And he says, well, what do I do? He got angry on the way home as a typical, typical person on this side of the church. And he goes to church, gets mad at the preacher. Within time, he finally gets right and does what God tells him to do. But he remains in the in the church that he grew up in. Uh, see, there's, there's things in the Bible. I believe Naaman's name is going to be in the book. Do you think God's going to cast him in the lake of fire? No. What about Lot? What's the Bible say about him? He was just. I think his name is going to be in the Lamb's book of life as he stands at the great white throne judgment. So according to 17, 16, chapter 16, it says, I will not leave my soul in hell. That's not David. By the way, we know David. He's got the sure mercies of God. He committed two sins that he ought to go to hell, been in hell, should be in hell. And God says, I'm going to bless you and take care of you. I'm going to give you a seat. And you're going to sit with Jesus Christ in Jerusalem in the millennium as the prince. Now, how can you say that that verse is not Jesus Christ? When David says, I'm going to see God's face in righteousness. That's not in the church age. What happens to the church age? One day, we, they might dig a big hole and put us in the hole and we're just sleeping there. Absent from the body, be present with the Lord our soul. And then one day, we may be walking down the road trying to get people gospel tracks, trying to tell people about Jesus, going to church, getting hard times with the people in the church, listening to a stupid message. Listen to all kinds of junk and stuff that are going on in the, in the, in the church house and the, in the junk of the church today. And you're sitting there, oh, Lord God, what's going on here? And that's there! 
Next thing you know, you've got a royal meeting in the clouds with all those that are saved without no unbelievers in the group. And the church is going, what? where did those two people go? I believe there's going to be churches when the rapture is going to happen. If the rapture happens during a church time, the church is just going to go on with the service, not even notice. That's what's going to happen to the church. And what happens to all the unrighteous? They stay. And we shall see the face of Jesus Christ, who is what? He's our Savior. He's at the right hand of God, and we believed on him. Psalms chapter 17, a prayer of David. And we're not done. I shall be satisfied. That's good. When I awake. Well, according to the verse, David says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake. So David's there rolling around the bed. He's got his three or four wives. Oh, alarm clock. Oh, God, how you doing? No. No, 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 no. When David's body comes out of the grave, awake. With thy likeness. You know what David was? He was a Jew. You know what Jesus Christ was? He was a Jew. You know what Jesus and David are going to look like? They sure ain't going to look like on the, on the magazine at, at, the, at the Walmart, the December issue. They charge you to whatever, how much money to see a white Jesus. That's not what David and, and, and uh, Jesus are going to look like. Now, I'm not going to say, I cannot say, let me get this thing. I'm not going to say that David and Jesus are going to look alike, but they are Jews. The Bible says the born-again Christian shall be as Jesus Christ. We will look like Jesus Christ. Except for the nail-pierced hands and the nail-pierced feet and the, and the spear hole in his side. Jesus keeps those. We don't get those. But in John chapter 1, one record, he came on to his own. Jesus was brown, as brown as you can think he was brown. And he was Jewish. That means he was short. You know, the, you know what they amazed when they picked the first king of Israel? That he was tall. They said Saul was, was, was shoulders above all the people. Here's a tall Jew. So you got to read the Bible. you got to get America out of the Bible. What, what David's saying here, listen, after my death, I'm going to see the Lord in righteousness. I'm, my body's going to be resurrected. Peter says that his sepulcher is here, and I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be in his likeness. I'm going to look at Jesus and say, hey, you're a Jew. Of course I have to be a Jew. I came from your family, David. Oh, yeah, for God. Oh, I mean the scholars forget. The people who draw the little pictures of Jesus don't have the foggiest idea what's going on. But isn't it, I'm going to close with this, this little remark here. Of all the museums of art we have, of all the cave drawings, and whoever did them, I don't care. It has nothing to do with it. But we have the pictures of the cave drawings and stuff like that. There have been centuries of centuries ever since Probably Adam and Eve, people drawing. And isn't it amazing that there is not one picture of Jesus ever? Of all the artists, of all the drawings, and we do not have one picture of actual Jesus. And if you were going to the newsstand this morning, you would have seen every single paper have the front page of Nelson Mandela's face on there. And time and people, whatever, then the next uh, January issue will be Nelson Mandela's face, the greatest of all greatest of greatest, just like all the other idiots out there.
But David is going to stand up and he's going to say, that's my son. You know, a lot of people are going to be shocked when they see Jesus saved or lost. Can you imagine a Christian in a church who's going to celebrate Christmas, the birthday of Jesus, and step up to the plate at the judgment seat of Christ and go, Is that what you look like? That wasn't the picture I had in my living room with the with the candles and the and the and the and the and the, and the, 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 uh, the palm leaves and the and, the, and all that other stuff. You don't look like the my picture there. And Jesus said, "Thank you very much. I wasn't supposed to look like that." Now you just open up your mouth in judgment. Lay that one down. Lay that box down, lady. I've seen I've seen a church back in Connecticut where the stained glass windows there's a colored Jesus. Ain't colored either. That colored at least. Got a little too dark in that one. Let's just spend some time down on the beach and on Jesus wouldn't do that. Thy likeness, the only thing I'm going to say about that to be saved is they're both Jews. What a remarkable study that we've been doing to realize between Jesus and, and David and to realize what the scriptures actually say. You gotta study you gotta study the Bible. The Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God, a man that rightly divided I mean the man that's the, oh boy, I blew that verse. The rightly divine the word. You can't just get up there and say this because some idiot in the classroom uh, and behind a pulpit or behind a, a podium said it. You got to check it. That's why we're going verse by I mean, chapter by chapter. There's no way you can say, oh, you know, you, you were picking on me in that, that video or you were looking at my windows for that audio. No, we're going chapter by chapter and we're doing it all. And we did last night. Chapter 16, and we studied verse 10, and we come back now in the very last verse of chapter 17, and we find out David did not go to hell by his own words. You know what I say today in 2013 on December 6th? You know what I say? I am not going to hell. David has the same testimony I have. David was given a special blessing by God to say, I'm not going to hell. No other, no other Old Testament saint could say that. But only him and Solomon. You read what God said to Solomon. You read what God said to David. God promised those two salvation. No one else. So I can say I'm going to heaven when I die, and David says it too. So you can't say that David went to hell. Sorry. And David knows in the resurrection, and David knows in the judgment. And then he counter he counterized that, talking about the, the, the wicked man who will not see God in righteousness. That's the end of that one. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think 
that God his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died 